Hello, welcome to week four, unit four, writing data to files. How do you write data to files? Similar to the read method, which you learned about in the previous unit, there is a write method. And the write method can be used to write data to files. When using the write method, you have to be aware of two things. First, it can only write strings, so you can't only write data type string to a file. There is no way that you can write a float or an integer directly. You first need to convert them to strings. And whenever you try to create a line break in the file, you need to use a special character backslash n. Well, that's exactly what is shown in the little code snippet on the right hand side of the screen. We there open a file and then we write some numbers to it. And in order to write the numbers, which are stored in the variable i, we have to convert this variable to a string. But let's have a look at it on our notebooks. So again, it's showtime. Let's switch over to the notebooks and see how we can write data into files in Python. The first thing we are going to do is exactly what I've shown you in the slides. What I'm doing here is I'm opening a file. The file is named numbers.txt and it's opened in write mode. Remember, the write mode creates a file if it's not present. If it's present, everything inside the file is deleted. And then we loop through a range from 0 to 99 using the for i in range statement. And for each and every number, we create a line. And the line consists of the number converted to a string and then concatenated with the backslash n character to create a new line. And each line we write to the file. Remember, we don't need to close the file. The with statement takes care of this for us. So let's execute this. Actually, before we do this, I switch over to my directory in which I have stored the units or the notebooks for this unit for this week. And you see there is no numbers.txt file. Now I'm executing the program. We don't see any output because we don't have a print or something. But if I now switch back to here, you see there is a numbers.txt file I just created. And I can now open this file and see what's inside it. I will be doing this again using my Jupyter server. So there is a numbers.txt. And you see it contains the numbers 0 to 99. Let's try one more thing. I change the program a little bit. I remove this part by just commanding it out so it's not executed. Oh, now actually, let's delete it completely. And then we execute the program again. And we now go back and see what's inside the file now. And now you see all the numbers are written into one long line because we didn't add any line breaks to it. So if you want to add a line break to, to a file, it's important to remember to always put the backslash n character. So what we've learned so far is that we can only write strings to files. So what do we do if we want to write different data types? For example, I have here a list and the list contains tuples and the tuples are students, for example, Harry Potter and Ron Weasley and Hermine Granger and so on. And we want to write this data to a file. How could we go about this? So what we need to do is if we want to write a text file, we actually need to convert the data into text strings. And this is exactly what's happening down here. What's happening down here is that we first open the file using the with statement. And then we go through our list of students using a for loop. And for each student, we create the line we want to write to the file. How do we do this? So we loop through the attributes of the students. For every attribute in the student, 
we build up our line. And how do we build up the line? We concatenate the current line with the attribute. And then we also add a comma so that we have a separator between the data. So what would happen if we, for example, have a look at Harry Potter? The first attribute is the name. It will be appended to an empty line. Then we have Potter. Next attribute is Harry. It will be appended to the line that already contains Potter and so on. And finally, if we have worked through all the attributes, we can write the line to the file. Again, we use the backslash n character to separate the lines inside the file. Let's execute the program and see what's happening. I need to switch back to here and open the student's text. And you see now the student's text file contains the data of our different students. If you look closely, you might notice two things. The first thing is there is an additional comma at the end of each line. And there's also an empty line at the end. Where does this come from? If we have a look at the program again, we will always append the comma to the line we create whenever we append an attribute. And that means also for the last attribute, we will add an additional comma, and that's what we have seen in, in the file. If you want to get rid of this comma, that would be possible, but for the time being, we, we, we don't really care about it. So we just leave the additional comma in. And then, again, to mention the backslash n, we create a new line with each and every line we write to a file. So we also create a new line at the end of the file, at the very end, and that's the reason why there is an additional empty line in the file we have written. So basically, you, you now know everything about writing data to files in Python. So now it's for you to practice writing data to files. Therefore, we have an exercise here. The goal of the exercise is write the letters from A to Z to a file, lowercase letters. Therefore, you should create a program similar to the previous ones I've shown you that writes all the letters from A to Z into a file. And there is a little helper function you need to know about. There is a char function which converts a number into a letter. So for example, 97 is converted into the letter A, 98 is converted into the letter B, and so on. The reason for that is the so-called ASCII table. I also linked to the ASCII table here in the notebook, so we can have a look at it. And it defines the encoding for numbers into text and vice versa. So let's see how this function works. I invoke it here two times, one time with 97 and one time with the argument 98, and you see the results are the letter A to B. So now you know how to convert from numbers into letters. Now it's your turn. I would suggest that you pause the video and try to solve the exercise yourself. So welcome back. Let's give this exercise a try. I'll show you one possible solution. What do we need to do? First, we need to open a file. And how do we do this? You already know about the with statement by now. With open, what do I call the file? I call it exercise1.txt. And I also need to specify a mode. I want to write to the file, therefore I specify the w mode. Remember, specifying this mode w will erase the contents of a file if the file already exists. But we don't care about this for now, and we assign this to the variable file. So now we need to loop through all the lowercase letters from A to Z. And as we know of this conversion function, we can, for example, use a for loop and a range. For number, number um, in range, what do we need to loop? We need to start at 97. And how far do we need to go? We need to go to 97 plus 26, as there are 26 characters. 
And then now we have the number. We convert this number into a letter and write it to a file. How can we do this? We, for example, create a line that contains the number converted into a letter using the char function. And then we also append a backslash n to write each and every character in its own line. And then we need to remember, of course, to also write this line to, a to the file using the write statement. As you already know by now, I don't need to close the file anymore because the with statement takes care of this. So let's give this a try. I execute the little program. And now I can have a look here at my exercises one.txt, and you see it contains the letters A to C. What we also could do for, of course, we could um, not only write the letters A to Z, but we could use the whole SKE range and see what happens if we do this. Let's have a look at the file again. And you see there are a lot of different characters which can't be um, nicely printed, therefore, they look a little bit strange in my editor in, in the Jupyter Notebook here. But anyway, further down, you would also find the letters A to C. So that was the first exercise. Then here is a second exercise, which you could also try yourself. It's about copying a file. You should write a program that opens a file, for example, the Lore Ipsum text, and copies the content of the file line by line into a second file. Yeah. I know each and every operating system offers a program that does exactly this, but to practice again, opening a file for reading and opening a file for writing and reading and writing uh, from files and into files, this is a nice exercise. Um, I would suggest you try to solve it yourself. So let's jump back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? You have learned how to write data to a file using the write statement. And you have also seen that it's required to convert everything into a string first before writing it to a file. Otherwise, if you would have tried to write a number directly, that would have resulted in an error. Thanks for watching and see you in one of the next units.